Okay, we are live. Um, just to make sure that everything is fine and everything is in place. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good night here. Good night to all of you that uh, are to this moment and waiting for this live stream. So we are one minute late from our exact time, but yeah. So we have um, everything really set up. So just. I just want to say that uh, everything is fine. So if anybody's watching, go ahead and submit a message. So let's good night for all. Before that we start, I will make sure that all is good and there is no problem with the stream. So I just want to check that it's, it does show up on the, on the web uh, the channel live stream all the channel page okay so it seems to be okay okay uh, so nobody's watching but it is stream okay cool um, so nobody's still there nobody's there yet okay Okay, so let's start by doing an introduction about uh, this episode, this video, what will be about. I'll be working on a PrestaShop theme, the 1.7, and we'll be creating one from scratch, and we'll be doing like a challenge, so I'll be putting a Google timer for one hour, and we'll be trying to uh, integrate the parts of these themes, whether the header, the menu, the slider, probably, and we'll try to see in which level or which um, which point we could reach so let's start with google timer and we do set this to um one hour so we'll be defining this to come on zero 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 and one shit not this one um uh, how to set this this and there you go so one hour and okay nobody's still there we have two people watching but anyway so if you're there just say hello that i can notice i would like really to pop out this i is there an option to do that okay this is it so i'll be putting this to the side okay that i can see if anybody does a comment okay oops sorry and okay when hour is ready and there you go so it's really um good information to to know to to learn about uh, at this episode i'm just kind of tired and uh, my english is not that good um what else what else so um let's go ahead start the timer tighten your belt and hope that you'll be enjoying this content okay so the very first thing is to have a new theme okay so to have a new theme in prestashpom7 there is plenty of options so option number one is go to github.com slash prestashop and from there you could download uh the entire repo and you will get um you will get go to this repo make this bigger slightly and download it and you will get um the themes folder that's containing the classic theme and by itself does contain some dev assets that is contained inside this folder uh, and inside this folder we'll be doing all the all the stuff so like uh, compiling using webpack css uh, javascript stuff etc the second way and the easy way is the kind of old school way is using um the copying of uh, an existing theme just duplicate uh, the code of an existing theme, rename it, and go ahead and activate it. So I'll be working on this one. I'll go accessing the themes. And for now, this is the theme that is active in my shop. And by the way, I'm using it for um, the current course that I'm recording now. Uh, and unfortunately, it was planned to be released like uh, one month ago, but it was really hard for me to organize things. So I'll be going on this approach here. Uh, I'll be simply duplicating this folder and uh, I'll be waiting for a minute. Oh, so the problem here that we have a lot of uh, JavaScript files inside the node modules right here. So I'll be introducing you this later, but this is the reason that the copying is so slow. 
Okay. Uh, I don't know whether should I stop or do whatever here. Okay. Nobody's still there. Probably have to refresh to see if anybody is watching. Nobody get a notification. Okay, no problem. So this is copying now. And it seems like it will be taking a while until it does finish. So as I said, we uh, we have node modules, so you have a, you can imagine how much files are there. And let's go ahead uh, and pick a template that we could use as a reference. And uh, ecommerce free template. So let's get Bootstrap three. And let's open this. What do we have here? A color lib. Mm, it seems like let's pick. Uh, not really what I'm looking for. Um, it's added uh, PrestaShop, for example. Commerce template free. And let's pick any template. I'm not selling this, so no problem with copyrights, you know. Uh, come on, dude. Well, this is taking more than expected. And let's pick this, for example. So zero term, zero theme, even though the name is not the, oh no, we have to click the demo here. Okay, so it's a 1.6 theme. Yeah, why not? Why not transforming 1.7 to 1.6? Oops, where did I went? Okay, so to comparing to what we have already, our current theme, let's put this to the side. Um, comparing to what we have already, as I said, there is a bit of changes. So the very first thing is that we have this banner that no more exists, but it's still there in the hook. If you look in the, inside the header, you will find uh, the banner a hook existing, but there's nothing hooked there. And we have this contact um, kind of information, and we have the con uh, so the phone number, sorry, and we have this contact us and the sign in to the right side. We have the logo, the search, the drop down. Uh, oops, wait, the the drop down for the cart, and we have the classic menu and the special things that we have this slider that is kind of changed the name on the 1.7 version that is on full width. Uh, good night, Mr. Aloy. Hello, Jaladin Abdel Qadr. Nice to meet you, man. Thank you for being here. And hopefully you'll be enjoying this content. So, uh, what is the difference? Uh, the product list, I think there is no big changes, except uh, like a bit of the layout has been changed. Uh, what else, what else? If you scroll all the way down, the footer, uh, no big changes really. The newsletter has been a bit reworked, so it would be like a crashing this theme and to uh, transform it into something deprecated. But anyway, so the purpose of this video is just to learn and to explain you a bit how uh, Precision 1.7 themes are working. So it's still copying. Wow. Okay, now let me just explain you. How okay? Let's see, let me close this one. Let me explain you how to activate a theme, a new theme in PrestaShop 1.7. So by going to uh, design. So previously I do remember that was themes. Then you go to the theme and activate it or do something like that. Now it's under the design. Sorry. Then go to theme catalog and from there we'll be having the list of the available theme. Uh, available for us that we could install them or activate them or delete them. Oops, I clicked on the wrong link. So it's theme and logo, sorry. Oh, come on, come on, come on, speed up. Okay, so as you may see here, we have my theme for shop shop. My shop is called shop, so this is why we have two shops. And this is like the, the active current theme. And these are the current available theme that we could use for development, okay? 
and uh, we still not see the new theme because it's still copying and we have to wait i'm sorry but uh, we have to wait does i explain you what kind of change that we have to do and let's close this that is not for this video this will be actually for the course okay so here this is the alloy theme copy so once uh, let's hope that config is there. So once you created your theme or you copied, uh, the copying is done. You go to uh, config folder and open this theme.yaml. This kind of introduction of a new stuff on PrestaShop 1.7. So this kind of parameter called uh, parameter, sorry, uh, files, and you could set up some stuff about your themes. So here we have the name, and this is really important. You must name this name we must define this name exactly as the name of the folder so there is no space accepted there is no like random character accepted so it must be like a, um i don't know what is what but a correct name you could use these dashes underscore no problems and make sure that this is exactly the name of the of the folder uh, display name uh, it's free it's up to you to call it whatever you want doesn't really matter because simply it will be used uh, right here inside the admin panel just for example all with themes or whatever and you have to also define a version again it's not uh, like important things uh, the author you could define your name your email your URL etc the compatibility so you have to tell uh, the core of Presta shop from where to where this version of this template is available uh, and we have uh, uh, the available layout so the layout is kind of the structure available page the layout mean uh, if i go back to the front page uh, we say layout when we do for example uh, two columns or one columns or three columns for example if you go to the category page of this website normally you will be having a different layout than this one on the home page so we have a uh, layout that's containing left column and we have a right column containing information about the category and images uh, and product list so this is what we mean by um, by a layout so right here we do define layouts actually we do define keys but you may be wondering from where these layout full width and layout booth columns came from what do they represent the answer pretty simple so if we go back to my themes folder and scroll down to the template here this template folder and go to layout this one and click on that we do find that we have files name it exactly the name of these keys with a tpl extension so this is simply the definition of your layout nothing really important and by the way there is one of these uh, layouts that is the principle that all the other ones are extending from it okay so as you may see here we are extending from the layout booth column okay all right let's go back to theme.yaml okay we do talk about layout assets so assets mean assets css javascript files just if you'd like to uh, add on some custom um, custom gs or css files then you can do it through this uh, setting sections let's say uh, we have global setting for example if you'd like to uh, force some parameters <clears throat> to be applied to the shop when you do activate your theme for example here uh, there is an option for ps image quality to be used the png extension uh, right here also you could enable or disable some modules some themes came with what we call dependencies for example uh, let's say that the theme need to have uh old carousel module or something like that then you have to define it at this section also you can you define your own section uh right here so uh hook modules to hook this is the name of the hook you could define your hook here let's say test hook and dots and right here you have to type the name of the modules uh let's get rid of this okay so these are the hooks we have also the possibility to define image types the cart the smaller default the product image etc and we have also some theme settings section that is containing the default layout so you you are telling the core presta shop what kind of layout that will be default for your shop we have also the list of available layouts and right here we are actually overriding uh, and specifying the layout for the category page and for the best sales new product price and contact so for example contact i'm forcing this layout left column okay 
uh, that's uh, that's quick introduction to this uh, theme.yaml now that the copying is done we could carry on with our update so as I said first of all we need to rename this folder and give it like a unique name comparing to the existing theme into our shop so I'll be doing a live stream for example Oops, what is that stream YouTube kind of stupid name to use but yeah you get the point okay so copy that name move back to theme.yaml scroll all the way to the top and right here where we have this name put live stream name all right now we could say live stream uh, or template created uh, during the live stream of YouTube okay dude no here yeah, we could buy uh, you could define whatever you want option but i won't waste your time on that because we we are limited in time we already lost like 13 minutes now move back quickly to the admin panel uh design theme and logo refresh the page and let's see what will happen let me just get a like if anybody is watching we have three people watching so peace to all of you out there and don't be shy say hello uh okay 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 so where is my theme whoa i don't say that this is embarrassing this is live stream what so all we theme all we theme version okay so actually it seems like um prestashop did detect that i have a new theme created and there is a file that is registering the name of these themes. So I actually, uh, and honestly, I did forget where this file is located, but let me lay on my IDE to find that for me. So I'll be telling him, go ahead and find this alui.scss, it's a JSON file. So this is it, alui, what is this? And now it's bootstrap. I'll we shop shop.json where is this file is located okay so we are under the presto shop the config and we have themes and we have theme.alloy this is the copy and we have the classic here so we have to get rid of this because it's still reading uh, where the heck does it go we're still reading this name that is coming from the fact that we did copy this theme name so just don't get lost here we are under a config folder that is part of the presta shop not uh, the presta shop core not the themes folder so when we did copy here and we did refresh then presta shop core detect that we have a new folder it was called alwi theme dot dash copy and go ahead and he did go and created a new file under the themes and he called it alwi themes and inside it he put a shop dot json and he applied this alwi theme name this is why we do see that we have a duplication okay so the solution here is simply go ahead and rename or delete it i never try that but i'll go ahead and delete that that i can force prestashop to rewire things together so Control F5, and we have live stream YouTube with exact name that we that I did define minutes ago. So let's go ahead use this theme and hope that nothing embarrassing will happen. Okay, loading, loading, loading. Okay, great. So everything went well. Uh, now I don't know, uh, still yet I don't know whether everything went well or not. So I have to do something just to test that everything went okay so to do that i will be moving back and i will need to launch a terminal i believe it's already up but for another file when another theme this is actually for the course as i said and we have to access this uh, this new uh alloy theme not this one but live stream and i will access the devs folder and here um uh, shit it's really ridiculous the terminal on linux um uh, how to say it's a dir i think so it's better to open it really on the term in the ID. It's a ridiculous terminal on Linux. Okay, so go to not the config but the themes, um, live stream YouTube, and devs folder that is containing our set, the non compiled version of our assets, all the GS, all the CSS, like the source code before getting compiled is inside this folder. 
so I would like really to go ahead and test something and generally what I do to test that everything is working fine I do set uh, the body opacity to 0 0.5 or set something to color red but generally the opacity is the best uh, choice so now I have to launch uh, launch what to launch an npm script which is npm run watch and this is actually Webpack, so uh, this is the new features on uh, PrestaShop 1.7 that it can balance this Webpack, especially for your uh, developing stuff when you'd like to customize and build your themes the way you want. And don't get lost. What is that? Don't get lost because I just want to show you that inside this tab folder we have uh, a webpack config file and also we have package.json containing all dependencies that we'll be using that are actually blocked on that node modules folder and this webpack is responsible of compiling all the CSS GS for us okay so the compiling went well and just to get a better idea that npm run watch is simply defined here so I did npm run and watch is inside the scripts so you get the point now let's see if the body will become blurry. Okay, it's blurry, it means that everything is fine, that we can carry on with our work. All right, getting rid of that. How much time? 41 minute. Okay, so the very first thing that would be screwing down this, uh, what is the themes? I just kind of lost it. Okay, let's get rid of this one. Okay, so the very first things, as I said, I won't really waste time on working on the banner section because it's not there and it's not hooked, but I'll try to rearrange these two um, these two section of modules. So the very first one is uh, the contact, I believe. This is the contact, uh, contact link, yep. So, what the heck, control F5 would solve the problem for this. Okay. Uh, so to check we have to go to design position and from there we have to look where this contact uh, module is hooked so let's search for contact information and we do see that is hooked on the display footer and the display nav one okay so display nav one this is it I believe that and where is on the footer I'm not sure Okay, to be sure, I'd like to show you the way we do override this template from the modules inside the themes. It's uh, like the old school way. You create a modules folder, then the name folder or folder name is exactly the name of the modules. Then inside you place the views, the same structure as in the module core files. Okay, so I'll be searching for contact information, which is this one. And we have nav, we have contact info, and we have rich. So right here, I have no idea. So we'll be going the old school way and we'll be adding some lower room stuff. And let's see how things will look like. Okay, so we are on the right place, meaning that uh, we will be modifying on this. So, meaning that, uh, but we still not see any things, which mean that, um, that, uh, that there is no contact information defining into the admin panel. So I did add these two HR and it will see that there is no information displayed. So we have to go to modules and module manager and go to that contact info and set up some information like the phone number or something like that. So we have to search here for contact and it does show me contact information and go to uh, okay, I kind of forget. I think it must be shop parameters and contact. Yep. Okay, it has been really a long while that I did not work on on Presta Shop. So um, okay, uh, I want again time. I will be simply uh, doing hard coded stuff. Sorry guys, but uh, sometimes we do forget things. So uh, let me go ahead and type a phone number. Uh, let's one two three four okay this is a phone number okay that's the contact information oh it seems like that was correct that was displaying what actually it was displaying this ehref contact link um 
Okay, n no big deal. No big problem here. We could stick to the plan. Okay, so we have a phone number and we must add this icon. I'm not sure how I will get that icon, but if I use this, uh, let's do that inside a span. And let's see if I have that loaded into my uh, current style. No icon. But here, let's try and inspect how this icon is generated. So it's material icon, meaning that I have to go to somewhere in the internet where material icon are defined and search for that. So material icon and I'll be searching for a phone. Icons. Okay, search for phone. And there you go. So we have perm. No, not this one. Uh, per media setting phone no okay phone okay mean I can do this material icon and how to set it to be a phone how it set it yeah we have I and inside it we have that uh, something mm, okay clicking here what will happen Ah, there you go. This is weird though. It's not the best way, by the way. I think there is another way, but since I'm gonna press it here, phone, no. How it will look like him. Oh, just stupid. Material and iPhone. Why is not formatting? Anyway, so controller five, and we are expecting to have a phone, and it does work, great. Okay, moving ahead, we have contact us, we have the sign in, contact us, and we have the sign in, and I think I, I did crash the modules right there. Um, so it was contact info, and what is this, contact us? So it's the header user info and it's contact link. Do we have a module with this name? No, I think. Contact information, contact form. Um, okay, let's go back to, uh, to the modules manager and search for contact. Do we have any other contact possible module? We have contact form. Added a contact form, contact us page, which will be the link to that page that you normally to be contact. So we could, uh, oh, there's no such link. Contact us. Okay, so this is this is simply a link to that page. Okay, so we could whether hard coded, which is like the stupid way to do that, or um, expect what is that. Uh, modules and hook it but here I believe I screwed up things right there so sorry for wasting you this minutes but I have to re override this re 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 revert that sorry okay so contact us is leading to um, to the contact page okay wow time really run quick contact us meaning okay but we have to move it to the other side and to move it to the other side we have to check the header.tpl that we could understand how uh, this uh, section of the page is working so we have a call a, a row with a heading and we have two column d5 and column d7 and we have nav1 and nav2 and i believe that contact is hooked to nav1 so go back to position and I have to uh, go to design position. Okay. Uh, and let's search. Oh, not here, but on display nav one. Nav one, and we have contact information. Unfortunately, we still cannot do such things. Okay, but we cannot drag from a hook to another. But. I will do uh, do it the old school way, but he also would like to get rid of 
all the non used uh, like language select the currency uh, block and the custom sign in I believe we have to leave it sign in we have to leave it but we have to get rid of all the other ones that are currently hooked at that section so we have to remove the sign the cart and the USD and the language the USD and the currency uh, okay shopping also in hook and in hook this one from here okay and go to transplant and in this part we'll be uh, doing the old school also uh, manipulation so we have a list of modules let's search for contact form and we'll be hooking that to um, the display nav1 so we have to be patient here and search display nav1 which is this one but let's make sure that's the right one we'd like to hook it to display nav2 not nav1 okay and hit save okay green refresh and what will happen here oh this is not what i expected actually but it does show me um the contact form on the header section oh shit not what i expected let me just revert that so display nav1 display what i've written there display nav1 Ah, nav2 sorry uh custom contact info not contact info uh what kind of module should be hooked there We have only three, you're not receiving to maintain the smooth experience more. Okay, I think I have to reduce a bit quality. So, uh, cancel, stop, I'm recording and streaming. So, I'm just Okay, so hopefully that uh, the quality will be better now. Uh, where I was, we have to transplant a module, as I said here, and we must know what kind of contact must be here. So contact information, it seems like it only display that email and stuff, but contact form uh, is not displaying the right, uh, the right output. So let's go ahead and visit that contact form. So we have contact, we have contact form, and I believe we have two templates for that such things. So we have section form. Mm, okay, I'm kind of lost here. Uh, contact form will display that contact to the top, which is ridiculous, and it's not what I am looking for. We have the sign in. And we have the contact. How can I contact? How can I hook this contact as? Is it hard coded or something? Oops, not me. Oh, contact link, which is contact info. Okay, okay. We have to hook the contact info, not the contact form. My apologies, contact information and hook that to again display nav2. Okay, go quick, save that, and everything should be okay now. Refresh the page, sign in, and contact us. But here we have to flip that order, as you may see here. We have sign in, uh, contact us, then sign in, and this is the opposite. So to do that. It's very really simple display nav1, nav2, and drag and drop it right there. And up, green, successful message. All went well, great. Okay, um, what about really jumping into something interesting? Because this is, this is simple stuff and we are running out of time for this episode. I'd like to work on this little section, which is the, oops, sorry, which is the slider here that, uh, we have some interesting work to do that we get that full width uh, layout. All right, so this slider, we have to, first of all, like the old school way, and as I always do, 
I do inspect where this one is. How could how does it look like? Does it inside a container or inside a row or inside a, a, a call or whatever? So step by step, let's see. We have this nav navigation uh, panel, navigation menu, whatever. We have this content. So this content by looking into uh, the style, there is no limitation in terms of width. So what about defining background red or padding 5 EM, 5 pixels? We do see that it's centered, meaning that there is a container on the top and the container. And this is actually a problem when we'd like to do some elements in the full width. Okay, so uh, I have to go back to to home. <laughs> I have to go back to this. Um, I don't know where to go actually. Uh, I have to check inside this index.html. Oh, sorry. What am I talking about here? Man? I have to go to this page and search for slider. And do see that it's hooked to display home. This is the hook that we are looking for. And display home is not here, and I have no idea where it could be. So again, I'll be doing that the old school way: Control F5 or Control Find, uh, and search for display home. And actually, the hook would be named home, not display home, as I think. Uh, okay, so where is it? So this is a template index.tpl, and we have hook home. So the block is defined it somewhere else inside this page tpl that we are extending so this is some syntax uh, from smarty nothing really important nothing really like kind of different or hard to understand so up oh, when we do get rid of that hook home everything is gone okay then we this block um, let me just explain this because some people don't really know what the heck is smarty let's jump into this page.tpl that is actually located at the same folder of this page which is this one so this page actually or this template defined block what we call block so block is uh places where you can inject your content when you do extend this theme okay so if i move back to index.tpl we have block name hook name or hook home sorry if i move back to this and search with that uh what is that a no, no, block name okay if i search here sorry for block content i will do find that i have a block uh but yeah sorry it's this one so we are injecting our content here okay so for example if i do remember this remember if i do rename this to something else and i try to refresh look what will happen nothing will be uh, 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 nothing will be shown here and I can, okay, I would like really to go a bit quicker here. Wow, this is live and embarrassing. <laughs> okay, that's not working this way, shit. Ah, dude. I think, what do you mean by that? So we have this block container that is this one. And we are overriding its content by this creepy section. But if now I do rename this, normally I will have n n go away. I will have nothing in my page. If no, I will go ahead and sleep. Okay, great. So we did define this uh, page content container block inside the page.tpl, and since this index.tpl is extending this, then we can override that specific module by simply defining this block name equal to that specific name and inject whatever we want inside it hopefully this is clear and you get it because i have to speed up a bit and the hour is almost done uh, okay 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 so as i said the slider is hooked to the home uh, hook and this home hook is inside a container okay meaning that it would be always centered and we cannot go full width so the solution here is to go away go ahead not go away and unhook this slider from here and use a new way to hook modules and let me explain okay there is no more slider here now 
Okay, 22 minutes to finish this up. Okay, so the page to PL. Let's go and search for a place. I would like first to see where is the container, where does it came from. So this uh, file itself extended from dollar layout, and this dollar layout is actually this, uh, not this one, but actually the which one? Please, 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 the full width. Ah, oh, sorry, it's extending this one. Uh, layout, layout, booth, colon dot tpl layout. Booth, where is booth? Booth, booth. Yep, this one. Okay, let's search for container, and there you go. So, this is the class. I'd like to do always lorem that I can see where I'm putting my legs. Okay, so this lorem is displayed at uh, inside this container. Okay, and this container, as we said, it's a bootstrap container, meaning that it would be like shrink it to the middle of the page and we cannot do full width so the solution here is simply to create a container full width and inside it create a row called md12 and inside it we could type whatever you want and everything will be full width okay just refresh the page and everything is okay now it's time to look for a way to hook our module the slider into this section. To do that, again, in PreStation 1.7, we have what we call the widget API. If you don't know how, what is a widget, you can wait like a couple of weeks and be releasing my course, or you could go uh, to uh, PreStation um, widget API. Okay, but I really recommend that you wait for my course. Uh, and let's go to this very first link. And there is plenty of description that you could um, look here and uh, understand what widget mean and how to use a widget. From a smarty, this is simply the syntax. Okay. We do widget and right here we must know what is the key name of that slider. So to do that we have to go back to modules and search for slider and open the main module ps image slider and to get the name it must be ps image slider is that it okay so does it actually include widget api we must make sure so okay it does include the widget api and i'll be putting that one right there and hope that the name is correct. Ooh, we ran into trouble. Oh, capital W. Oh no. Define us and set this to true. And what is running? What is the problem? Oh, dude. Uh, widget API, widget name. Okay, we have some. Okay, so next error var ta 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 on line 60. What is the problem? Syntax error. Hmm. What do you mean by syntax error? Syntax error inside inside this one. Uh, we have to search again. Uh, widget name con ps contact info. Widget name ps. Ah, I used single quote. Yeah, this is another stupid things on PrestaShop. I don't know why, but you have always to use single uh, double quote instead of single. Elsewhere, you run into these ridiculous errors. And let's revert that back that we get a better and quick refresh. Okay, let's see if everything will be okay now. Okay, we have an error because I think the name must be PS, not, not capital. And oops, okay, good. What the freaking crap is going on? 
he said that module is not a widget interface module widget whoa 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 um did i write slider okay so this is actually a problem related to the fact that i i don't know what to or how to write that module name um display not but i just want to show you that these things work right so i'll be hooking this contact form and some thing should be working okay now so what okay forget that and just deactivate this to false and i should have my contact form displayed Whew, thank you god uh and the problem as i said what is the name of that modules and how to get that name contact form uh whoa, 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 whoa. i think i have to search here contact form inside and so it's a class name contact form uh the name uh okay 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 that may explain they change a lot of things on PrestaShop, honestly. There's something else. There's something else. Scroll all the way to the name property. And uh, this dot name, which is shit. Well, there's plenty of files here. And the name is PS Image Slider. Uh, I used that and didn't work, mate. PS image slider. Let's refresh and please. Yes, it's working. There you go. You can do it whatever you want. So, how much time is left? 15 minutes. Great. So, we have the image slider on a full width display, and just we have problem with this image because of the, because of the air. Kind of shrink it to be fitted inside uh, uh, 11, 14 pixel and cannot go full width. But here I could also play around with this and this is actually the last section of this video is how to manipulate the style of modules. Okay, so the image, no problem on the image, but if we are trying to investigate these elements here, I'll be finding that there is limitation of width. Okay, so this is the div call md12 call fluid whatever and I put a filter right here and I call that width okay so the very first thing that we have this this width 16% okay but it's not important for now because we are looking for something else which is this ul and this uh, le le and this le so the le also there's no definition for the width but Clicking down to this anchor, the figure, and um, the image. Okay, so we have a max width set it to something like 300. So what about 100%? No problem on that. I think there's a limitation on height here. And the image, does it the image? I auto. um whoa 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 we have a height problem here okay there you go high inner uh auto what about changing that to auto and i would like to set it to 500 pixel background red auto hmm. okay uh so this kind of will take more time to investigate in this, but I would like to show you how to define custom style inside that developing assets for specific modules. So this is my approach. Personally, I do things this way. I go to uh, the devs folder where you have all your assets and I came here to the CSS folder and I create a new folder and I will call that modules. Oops. 
it still exists okay great so it does exist because i already created that and inside it i create a new folder with the, the module of uh that i would like to override so for example here during the course that i was recording i created an override for the currency selector and the language selector and i'll be creating another folder for the ps image slider so i would like to pick the folder name and move back to my template modules a new file and this file will be dot scss oops okay so dot scss and i do inspect the classes that are used for this block so first of all we have that uh, id carousel and from there i start doing like them for example padding 5 em border oops that's a couple of dots border uh five i don't know two em dotted uh, green and this would be the best theme ever and i do like a margin uh, what is that margin 2 em uh 2 em zero just to make sure that it will be full width uh it will be full width and extended from the top and the bottom and get a quick like to the terminal all is green great now control f5 and let's see what happen nothing happened because simply i did not load this new file into my entry file which is module.scss that i did not mention so i apologize with that folder create a module.scss that will be the entry point for all your uh, files and right here let me just get rid of that since i don't use it and i'll be loading the image slider file and okay moving back all is green now if i do Control f5 look to the beauty that you'll be seeing nothing yet okay there you go so we have these beautiful borders and uh we have a padding and we have also some stupid things but this is could explain you how to do override these things and you may be also wondering where the main style of these elements coming from again the old school way do inspect and see so you do see that everything is themed on the css in bootstrap in, in prestation 1.7 but this is simply because everything is compiled and put it inside the theme.css to speed up like the download and uh, to cache that file but this is not the case the old school way copy that class name move back to your ide come on do and search so again i'll be here control f5 and search change the filter to scss and enjoy so we have plenty of things and we have one of them it's under the component dot scss okay that's we have like a proper file for our modules and we have all the the stuff that you could change override or even get rid of so let's do this bad practice but just we can test what's going on there okay what controller five and you will see ugly things happening so uh, we have uh, like the basic setup for our themes so as i said there is two approaches personally i for like a components that don't have their own file inside this uh, folder i do create a modules folder and inside it i create um like a file to load all the files from these modules folder for the modules a css file and start customizing and hacking your uh, your component at that uh, file uh how much time is left eight minutes okay we could do something here um what else what else i'd like to show you uh okay uh, templates modules and what else okay um that's it i think i will stop here but uh, let's get a quick look at my channel here uh, and i'm quite happy because uh, things start to move a bit lately probably because i improved my content a bit oh dude what 
And I will, I'd like to uh, pay your attention to a very important section, which is this community section. I really will invite you guys to see what I'm publishing there because from time to time I do publish like free com free free component free coupons uh, that you may enjoy to let me get and uh, use to uh, grab my courses for free. Uh, for example, this one I I put uh, like three of my five courses uh, for free and the other ones with like nine bucks. That's it. And also I publish like updates about my coming videos and um, if there will be a live stream or something. Uh, so go ahead and check the community. If not subscribe, it's for sure you have to subscribe, please. Uh, leave a good comment, thumb up the video. If you have any question, don't hesitate to put inside that box below this video. Um, I think we're good. So uh, we have to stop this live stream and uh thank you for watching and if you are watching uh, this video like in not non-live non-live non version um just expect that we'll be publishing more uh live stream like this so uh that was kind of the very first uh podcast or video so it may not be really that good but in the coming videos with your questions and comments i could improve the content and you have any specific part that i would like to explain um go ahead and use that box below um uh, okay i think that's it uh thank you for watching and see you in another episode Woo. <laughs>